I'm Russ Mitchell. Tonight, dire new predictions about disappearing species, melting glaciers, shrinking continents, and more. Scientists say all the results of global warming. Also tonight, a threat from the sun to those GPS navigation systems more and more of us have in our cars. John McCain's controversial visit to Baghdad. 60 minutes went along. We'll have an exclusive preview of Sunday's Scott Pelley report. And can your dog do this? Tonight, some of the greatest athletes on four legs. This is the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. And good evening. Katie is off tonight. We are beginning this evening with the dramatic changes that are coming to our world, at least according to scientists out tonight with their latest predictions. They say heat waves will cut food production and increase wildfires. By 2020, as many as 250 million more people could go thirsty. And if average temperatures increase just two degrees, it could put 30 percent of the world's species at a greater risk of extinction. We have two reports this evening on our changing climate, beginning with Mark Phillips. We're now over uh, the Hollywood freeway. The Hollywood sign had a narrow escape in a recent uh, California area, brush fire. It may not be so uh, lucky in the future. Well, more heat, more drought, and more frequent fires are in the forecast for the West Coast, according to the UN Climate Change Panel's latest report. All caused by the diminished mountain snowpack that global warming is predicted to bring. There'll be more competition for the Southwest's already scarce water reserves, and more heat waves in all parts of the country, and more flooding in low-lying areas of the Southeast. But the most severe effect of global warming over the next century won't be felt in the prosperous West. It'll be faced by those in the world least able to endure it, the poor. Tropical areas, particularly sub-Saharan Africa, will see increasing heat and drought, crop failure and famine. The low-lying river deltas and shorelines of Asia will lose their ongoing battle against rising waters. It's going to be the worst sufferers and poor not only in the poorest countries, but poor even in the rich countries. So I think uh, we really, as a global community, have to worry about the implications of climate change for the poorest people. But here's the dilemma. Those poor countries argue that they will now suffer due to global warming caused by greenhouse gases produced in the rich industrialized world. While at the same time, they're being told not to produce more greenhouse gases of their own as they try to industrialize their way out of poverty. The scientific argument about global warming is over. It's a political argument now. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London. I'm Jerry Bowen in Los Angeles. The dire warnings in the UN report come as no surprise in the American West, where devastatingly costly wildfires have become the norm. Southern California's massive 2003 Grand Prix blaze was thought to be exceptional at the time. Wow. At 60,000 acres, it cost $60 million to control and a billion dollars more in damage to homes and power lines. Fire officials say if the UN report is right, the Grand Prix was just a practice lap add into what we see with the climate change, now you're just pouring on a very high fuel, if you will, onto the whole fire, which could create something very catastrophic, but unfortunately it may not be unusual. Climate change is already seen as the main culprit in the more intense wildfires, according to a study that blames drought and too much tender dry fuel for a dramatic change over more than three decades. In just 34 years, the average time between discovery and control of wildfires has gone from seven and a half to 37 days. The length of the fire season has increased 78 days. The Bush administration says the report points up the need for better forest management and expertise to deal with global warming. We've got several decades of work to bring our forests back to more natural conditions that makes them less prone to these catastrophic fires. But it's the short term that's the problem, and the outlook is troubling. There's been a big change in the weather, and out west that may mean a never-ending fire season. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Los Angeles. Strange weather is certainly on a lot of minds in the northeast tonight, where a spring freeze is on. Up to a foot and a half of snow fell this week in parts of Maine and New Hampshire, bringing down trees and power lines. The utility crews are still working tonight to get power back. At one point, 180,000 homes and businesses were in the dark. And it was cold, relatively speaking, in paradise. The temperature in Hawaii yesterday got as low as 57 degrees. It was a record for that date. And if all this weird weather is not enough, scientists warn today of a new threat from the sun, 
something that can make those GPS navigation systems go haywire. More now from our science and technology correspondent, Daniel Seberg. They explode from the sun with the power of 10 million volcanic eruptions, solar flares. The colorful northern lights are a side effect. But these scenic events in space can cause serious problems for communications on Earth. The uh, solar flare. Researchers like Dale Gary from the New Jersey Institute of Technology now say intense bursts have affected the world's primary navigational tool, the Global Positioning System, or GPS. Two tenths of a mile ahead, turn right. It's handy for finding the nearest restaurant while driving, but it's critical for everything from airplane travel to the guidance of military weapons. As people are using GPS in more and more ways, people can end up relying on it in ways that uh, can be a problem if it's interrupted. The radiation from a solar flare contains radio waves, which act as noise or static, potentially disrupting not only air traffic and military activity, but also power grids and cell phones. The frequency of flares recorded in early December were so powerful, experts say, it was like an opera singer breaking glass. Here's an audio recording made then by a ham radio operator. This particular burst was a factor of 10 larger than the previous record. Scientists say these recent events serve as a wake-up call about the need to improve GPS satellites and communication systems to protect them against these intense solar phenomena. Daniel Seberg, CBS News, New York. When Congress began daylight saving time three weeks early this year, the idea was to save energy. But tonight it looks like the extra daylight may have led to more energy use, at least more gasoline. According to the Energy Department, gasoline consumption rose nearly 3% in those three weeks of March to the highest level ever for that period. Republican presidential hopeful John McCain is still drawing political fire tonight over his comments in Baghdad that security there is improving. Scott Pelley was with the senator on that visit this week for an exclusive 60 Minutes interview. With pressure to withdraw from Iraq, building back home, Senator John McCain landed in the midst of the Baghdad surge and did something that would have been unthinkable a few weeks ago. We'll show you ground yes, zero. The new commander, Army General David Petraeus, sealed McCain inside the latest armored Humvee. Soldiers call it a full-up Frag 5. And he took McCain on a Sunday drive to the market. General Petraeus wrote the book on the Bush administration's new strategy. He started eight weeks ago moving U.S. troops off of bases and into neighborhoods to clear and hold the streets. This is the centerpiece, the al Shorja market. Two months ago, it was devastated by a car bomb, but now the army has banned vehicles and laid on extra security. Petraeus brought McCain to a rug shop. Give me, give me three of them. An ordinary scene until you step back to see the 22 soldiers outside. Inside, McCain did his own reporting. In the last two months, are things better or worse? The rug merchant said things are better, but he said there are still snipers in the neighborhood that sometimes paralyze the market. The tour of the bazaar seemed, well, a little bizarre. The delegation played the role of tourists while surrounded by enormous firepower. The guns, though, couldn't protect McCain from his own words. The week before, trying to build support for the surge, he said this on television. The General Petraeus goes out there almost every day in an unarmed Humvee. And he said this on the radio. There are neighborhoods in Baghdad where you and I could walk uh, through those neighborhoods uh, today. Senator McCain now tells Scott he misspoke and regrets what he said. You can hear what he's now saying in this exclusive interview this Sunday on 60 Minutes. In Iraq today, at least 27 people were killed in a suicide truck bombing. It happened in Ramadi, the capital of Anbar province. Police opened fire on the bomber as he approached a checkpoint, but he crashed right into the barricade, detonating the TNT and toxic chlorine gas he was carrying. Al-Qaeda in Iraq is believed to be behind this attack, the ninth using chlorine gas this year. In other news, there's more fallout from the U.S. attorney firings. A top aide to Attorney General Gonzalez, Monica Goodling, abruptly resigned today. Goodling has refused to tell Congress what she knows about the firings, asserting her right against self-incrimination.
There is a lot more CBS News ahead. When we come back, they are short on equipment and now short on time to train. National Guard brigades facing another tour in Iraq. If you have a history of smoking and breathing problems, it could be COPD, which includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Discover Spiriva, the only once daily inhaled maintenance prescription treatment for COPD. Spiriva keeps airways open to help you breathe better for a full 24 hours. And it's not a steroid. Spiriva does not replace fast acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Tell your doctor about your medicines, including eye drops and illnesses like glaucoma, urinary, and prostate problems. These may worsen with Spiriva. The most common side effect is dry mouth. Others include constipation and problems passing urine. If you have vision changes or eye pain, your breathing suddenly worsens, you get hives or your throat or tongue swells, stop taking Spiriva and contact your doctor. Spiriva is one of many treatment options to consider with your doctor. So make a habit of breathing better with Spiriva. Meet Mark Millar, investor. I help people manage their pet's health. Make the right decisions early on and your pet will thrive. It's the same with retirement planning. Small actions you take today can impact what happens later. TD Ameritrade offers tools like Morningstar Instant X-Ray to help ensure that your portfolio is properly balanced. Open an easy IRA today and get a free copy of Microsoft Money. Independence, it's the spirit that drives America's most successful investors. It fuels our lives and creates the products we depend on. It powers our workforce. It brings us home and gives us warmth. It lets us travel the earth and reach for the sky. Vital for life, too precious to waste. Oil and natural gas. Together, let's use it wisely. Learn more at energytomorrow.org. Free and back home, the British sailors and Marines who were held in Iran for nearly two weeks said today the Iranians played mind games on them the whole time. They told reporters today they were also blindfolded, bound, and held in isolation. They insist they were in Iraqi waters when the Iranians captured them. As for why they confessed on Iranian TV to trespassing? We were interrogated most nights and presented with two options. If we admitted that we'd strayed, we'd be back on a plane to the UK pretty soon. If we didn't, we faced up to seven years in prison. These sailors and Marines called the whole thing an Iranian media stunt. Iran's government was quick to respond, claiming what the men said today was dictated by the British military. In this country, the Pentagon today began notifying National Guard brigades in four states. They'll be heading to Iraq a whole lot sooner than they expected, more than likely early next year. Indiana's 76th Brigade combat team got the word today. Units from Ohio and Arkansas are also on the list, and so is Oklahoma's 45th Infantry Brigade. As Harish Srinivasan reports, for the Guard members, this latest call-up could not happen at a worse time. Just throw them down. For Oklahoma National Guard members, there's a new urgency to monthly drills because they're being called back to battle. Normally, it would be another three years before these Guard members would train for redeployment, but the new Pentagon orders will send them to Iraq next year, shortening their time to train and to gear up. We're short some individual equipment uh, that our soldiers normally would have uh, and will have prior to going into combat. In fact, to train for battle, the unit of 3,500 soldiers says it needs 2,600 night vision goggles and 2,100 M4 rifles. Right now, the Oklahoma Guard doesn't have that essential battlefield equipment, and the general in charge says having access to the same equipment in training as on the battlefield is crucial. You can't train unless you have the equipment. General Bud Wyatt believes the Guard will eventually get the equipment, but says time is fast running out. We should have had all the equipment by now, and we should have had all the schools and all the training finished by now. But when you accelerate it by two years, you are behind the power curve, and we don't have time to piddle around. we got to get, get busy. Take a few steps back and again fall. Kirk Dowell is busy no matter which uniform he's wearing. An Oklahoma police officer, Dowell served in Afghanistan and in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Now he and wife Sanda are facing his third deployment in five years. It's extremely difficult to maintain your civilian career and, and family knowing that any minute that you could be separated from that. So Dowell will savor his time around the dinner table with his family this Easter weekend because next year his holiday will likely be spent rolling through Iraq. 
Ari Srinivas in CBS News, Oklahoma City. The last of three bank robbery suspects wanted in connection with yesterday's shooting death of an FBI agent was arrested today. That shooting is now being called a case of friendly fire. The suspect was captured after a 22-hour search through the New Jersey woods. FBI agents had him and two other men under surveillance yesterday for a string of bank robberies. Agent Barry Lee Bush was shot, apparently by another agent, as his team confronted the suspects. Up next on this Good Friday, we'll show you a place where it's criminal to be Christian. I feel great, really great, even with osteoporosis. And you know what? Deciding on a treatment with my doctor was almost easier than deciding what to wear tonight. To treat my osteoporosis, I take Boniva, one pill a month. Boniva helps me build strong, healthy bones to prevent fractures. Unlike weekly treatments like Fosamax, you only need Boniva once a month. So for me, Boniva was just a smart choice. You should not take Boniva if you have low blood calcium, severe kidney disease, or cannot sit or stand for at least 60 minutes. Follow dosing instructions carefully. Stop taking Boniva and tell your doctor if you experience difficult or painful swallowing, chest pain, or severe or continuing heartburn, as these may be signs of serious upper digestive problems. Look, having strong, healthy bones is so important. I've got this one body and this one life, so I'm going to do my best to get it right. Talk to your doctor about Boniva. I'm glad I did. Don't wait another week. Ask your doctor for a free trial offer or call 1-800-4-BONIVA. Once monthly Boniva. Want bigger, more beautiful potted plants? miracle Grow makes it easy with moisture control potting mix. Watch. The soil is so amazing, it actually stores water. Only releasing it when plants need it, taking the guesswork out of watering. Plus, there's miracle Grow plant food mixed right in that feeds for three months. So plants grow twice as big. Easy and amazing. Want it big? Want it beautiful? Make it miracle grow. Honey, can we go home now? Can we go home now? Sure. Unless the glasses can perform miracles, don't pay more than you have to. A promise of better lives through better patient outcomes. A commitment to the most advanced technology. And above all, a mission to put people first. Holy Cross, the only hospital in Broward County named one of America's 50 best. Holy Cross Hospital, where high-touch healing meets high-tech care. For a physician referral, call 866-4HC-DOCS. We're going to replace this pair of glasses with the same exact pair bought at Four Eyes for 40% less. Let's see if she notices the difference. This is Good Friday, the day Christians commemorate the death of Jesus. In Jerusalem's old city, pilgrims today trace the path he took to his crucifixion. And in Rome, Pope Benedict carried a large wooden cross into the Colosseum where early Christians were persecuted. Those Christians kept the faith in underground churches. In China, which claims to allow freedom of religion, Christianity is still underground today. Here's Barry Peterson. They sing, Baby Jesus is sleeping in the hay. To us, they look like children performing for their congregation. But to the Chinese authorities, they are criminals. Because this is an underground house church, so called because they meet without state approval. They let us in to take these pictures to show both faith and defiance, while this congregation bravely shared with us what happens when the authorities find the faithful. The police called us evil and arrested us for illegal assembly, she explains. Chinese-born American Sam Chow works in China for religious freedom and researched the dangers faced by underground church worshipers. I interviewed maybe 40, 50 people. Uh, every one of them were beaten and uh, jailed and uh, harassed. When Mao Zedong took power, he banned religion. Communism was the new faith. These days, the state allows churches, but worshipers must register with police. And yet, look at the faces. So many young people, even here. They've grown up in a society where the moral imperative is make money and get ahead. Uh, and that doesn't take you very far. People here are discovering perhaps a simple truth, that money alone isn't bringing happiness. 
So hundreds of millions of Chinese, their numbers growing every day, are seeking something more. So even traditional Eastern religions like Buddhism are flourishing again, but none like the underground Christians. In this village, they were even building their own church until, as this cell phone video shows, the authorities knocked it down. In China, it was once easy to know what to believe in, the Communist Party. Those days may be gone for good, as a new generation learns how to find and keep its own faith. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Beijing. A search is continuing tonight for two passengers still missing after a Greek cruise ship hit a reef in the Aegean Sea and sank. At first, authorities said everyone had been rescued, but today we learned a Frenchman and his daughter are still unaccounted for. Up next, Steve Hartman with the Simon America. Stay with us. See it now, anytime, anywhere. CBS wireless video and picture alerts. Text the word news to 99888. I have 50,000 going once, twice, sold to the gentleman I, in the center. You. I want to go ahead and sell it now. Constantly buying and selling stocks doesn't make much sense either. That's why Edward Jones advises clients to buy long-term investments. Cholesterol. It can come from bow tie pasta, but also from your grandfather bow. From that pie, creamy banana. And your mom, Juliana. A healthy diet is important. When that's not enough, adding Vitorin can help. Cholesterol comes from two sources, food and family. Vitorin treats two sources. Only Vitorin helps block the absorption of cholesterol from food and reduces the cholesterol your body makes naturally. Vitorin was also proven in clinical studies to lower bad cholesterol more than Lipitor alone, more than Crestor alone. Vitorin is not for everyone, including people with liver problems, women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Tell your doctor right away about unexplained muscle pain or weakness, which may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. Certain medicines or foods may increase your risk of getting this serious side effect. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. So eat right, stay active. But if that's not enough, ask your doctor about adding Vitorin, two sources of cholesterol. Treat them both with Vitorin. Presenting Ortho Weed Be Gone Max. So revolutionary, it targets and kills the toughest weeds without harming your lawn. Ortho Weed Be Gone sprayed here. Ordinary weed killer here. Only Ortho Weed Be Gone has a foaming action and weed targeting formula for total root kill. So it killed the weeds, but not the grass. The ordinary weed killer killed everything. Ortho Weed Be Gone Max. Kills weeds, not lawns. Guaranteed. Now available with new crabgrass control. Your eyes, they're your portal to the world. You need to keep them vital. Introducing a new supplement, Bayer Nutritional Science Eye Health and Vitality. Uniting science and nutrition to support healthy cells and tissues in the eye with a unique formula containing lutein and zeaxanthin. What will your vital eyes reveal? Find out more at BayerNutritionalScience.com. Uniting science and nutrition for your vitality. When Walter got hurt on the job, he was out of work for almost a year. We would have lost this house if it hadn't been for the disability insurance. It's insurance that uh, he didn't think that we needed. Mutual of Omaha. She always brings that up. Begin today. Does he look like one of the scariest men in America? They call him Dr. Evil. Find out why, Sunday on 60 Minutes. Monday, a life-saving new heart pump. It gave Selena her life back and may be doing much more. Dr. Sanjay Gupta will show you how it works on the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. Well, what can your dog do? Beg, roll over, perhaps give you a paw? Steve Hartman shows what the jocks of the canine world are doing in tonight's Assignment America. In a second, you're going to see that dog weave in and out of those poles. And I just want you to know, we did not speed up this video. That's just how fast they go here at the American Kennel Club Dog Agility Championships in Sunbury, Ohio. Last weekend, dogs and handlers from 42 different states took part in the competition. The object? To get your dog through a series of obstacles in a specific order. The order changes every time, so it's up to the handler to tell the dog where to go next. Through the yellow tunnel and onto the seesaw. The fastest time, with the fewest mistakes, wins. And they take it seriously. 
I feel pretty secure on the opening. Uh, we do that opening a lot. I was really worried about the tunnel A-frame discrimination. That is an area that I always have to work with him. Wow. And you haven't heard the half of it. Is that stretching? Stretching! After we run, <laughs> you kind of keep your muscles loose, just like any athlete. I love being with this dog. Gen Z St. Croix, that's the woman's name, and her dog, Star, are fairly typical contestants. You're the best puppy in the world. You want a fuzzy toy? That's a dumb question, but do you have any kids? No, we don't. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I do this a lot. Fact is, getting to this level of dog agility is virtually a full-time job practicing nearly every day, traveling to meets nearly every weekend. How into this are you? This is Terry LeClaire. Pretty far. He re-landscaped his yard for this sport. So the thing about agility, eventually you get to the point where you take out your patio to increase the practice space. So the patio's gone. I didn't have a swimming pool. Other people fill in the swimming pool. No. But yes, they do. Other people also work out a lot themselves to keep up with the dogs. Other people. You didn't necessarily to get into the best shape for this. Uh, it'd be hard to deny that, so. <laughs> in fact, if I looked out, I have trouble seeing the dog, you know. But in a way, that's the beauty of this sport. Although there were multiple winners in multiple categories, I noticed everybody left the course praising their dog. Little league parents, take note. You're a good girl. This is what sports are supposed to be like. I love you, Jake. As maybe you notice, dog agility is primarily dominated by middle-aged women. But I tell you, if CBS gave me a six-month sabbatical, <laughs> Riley and I would be out there in a heartbeat. It yeah. looks like so much fun. It does look fun. Always good to have a backup plan, too, Steve. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not going to quit my day job. <laughs> what do you have next week? Okay, three choices, as always. First one, Sister Julie, a nun devoted to prayer, celibacy, and blogging. She encourages people to ask her about anything. Anything. And people do. If you want, we could meet her. Or would you rather visit Arnold Bloom, considered by many kids to be the greatest substitute teacher ever? He's also bordering on the oldest. What makes him so awe-inspiring? Or finally, it's a softball team that just can't lose. The Northampton Lady Spartans have the longest winning streak in college sports history. How long is it? And will they blow it on national TV if we show up next week? So those are your choices. Devote or suggest a story of your own, please go to cbsnews.com and click on Assignment America. Story with the most votes will play right here next Friday night. Tonight's Assignment America segment is sponsored by ExxonMobil, taking on the world's toughest energy challenges. It's simple, really. Give kids what they need to succeed, and eventually, they will. That's the idea behind the National Math and Science Initiative. A new program ExxonMobil helped create dedicated to producing 10,000 new math and science teachers. Because if we help kids today, there's no telling how far they'll go tomorrow. ExxonMobil. And finally tonight, the Masters. It was another cool, dry day for round two at Augusta National in Georgia. Halfway through the tournament, and only a handful of golfers are below par on a very fast course. Tiger Woods is three over. You can catch live coverage of the Masters tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern Time and Sunday at 2.30 right here on CBS. And that is the CBS Evening News. Katie Kirk will be back on Monday. I'm Russ Mitchell in New York. Have a wonderful holiday weekend. Good night.